now that Build Back Better is sort of stalled, what are House Democrats doing now to address inflation? Well, it's my expectation that we are going to revisit in short order the Build Back Better Act in the context of making sure that we can lower child care costs, lower health care costs, lower the high cost of life-saving prescription drugs, lower housing costs, and lower energy costs, all of which the Build Back Better Act will do. And these are all provisions that, by and large, Senator Joe Manchin supports. Uh, it's my expectation uh, that as soon as this voting rights uh, issue is resolved, hopefully favorably, hopefully in the next day or so, but if it's not, we'll always live to fight another day in defense of our democracy, inspired to do so by John Lewis and others, Dr. King, uh, and their spirits. But I do believe uh, that the Senate, in short order, uh, will revisit the Build Back Better Act and we're going to be able to get something over the finish line in terms of addressing inflation. Today, uh, the Judiciary Subcommittee on Antitrust is holding a hearing uh, on some of the issues in terms of market power and consolidation related to uh, the food industry and meat processors and the dynamics that exist there, because we do believe there's a lot of pandemic price gouging that has taken place that we under the leadership of Chairman David Cicilline, will begin to expose and elevate today. I just go to the back. Yeah, who hasn't spoken yet? And then we'll circle back. Uh, there's an increasing number of progressive primary challengers for House Democrats who um, these candidates see as out of step with the Democratic Party, more moderate members. Um, is this a sign that the party is no longer a big tent party and there's a competition between ideologies? Or can you respond to that? Well, House Democrats, we're not a cult. We're a coalition. We're a coalition uh, of a variety of different people all across the country. That's progressives. That's new Dems. That's blue dogs. All points in between. And primaries are part of the democratic process. And the House, at the end of the day, is about renewal. I expect that every incumbent is going to aggressively defend their records and, at the end of the day, uh, make the strongest possible case that they can, myself and Pete included, in our own respective races as to why we should have our two-year employment contract renewed, I don't think primary challenges are a sign of any dysfunction. It's a sign of democracy working. I uh, wanted to ask you again about stocks. Uh, last week, you, you said that um, you hadn't had a chance to take a look at any specific, specific proposals, but you know we had a couple bills come out last week. Um, Congresswoman An Angie Craig says that she wants to start the conversation about why leadership is against this. So I wanted to get your take just kind of norm normatively. Like, who who you... in leadership is against this? Huh? Who? Uh, Speaker Pelosi. Okay. Um, I wanted to get your take on this. Like, normatively speaking, do you see something like a blind trust or just kind of a ban on trading individual stocks while in office as something I appreciate that your enthusiasm on this issue, but let me try to be as clear as I can be. As the chair of the House Democratic Caucus... I don't get out ahead of members when there are ongoing discussions about how to deal with issues of importance to them. We've got multiple bills that have been introduced by a variety of different members that are going to be before the committees of jurisdiction. None of those members has talked to me yet about their perspectives as to why their bill or this issue should move forward. Is it an important issue? Yes. Is it an issue that I'm going to comment on ahead of these members? No. Other than to say, my own view speaks for itself. My financial disclosure statements are publicly available. I do not own individual stocks, nor do I intend to own individual stocks. Beyond that, I'm not getting out ahead of any members. I have a follow-up on um, What I'll also say, I, I also don't own individual stocks um, and, don't, and don't plan to, just like the chairman. Um, but what I will say is you know, we're going to allow this process um, to move forward. These members are going to be able to make their case to committees of jurisdiction. Uh, leadership has said that they want the House Administration Committee, of which I serve on, uh, to revisit this issue. Upholding the public trust is the number one thing that we want to do when we think about this issue. We want to make sure that people understand 
We're doing this for the right reason. Um, and so to the extent we need to make changes to the Stock Act or increase penalties or ensure compliance, further compliance with the Stock Act, we're not going to hesitate to do that. What we aren't going to do is to be lectured on this issue by someone who coddled the twice impeached president and has his own ethical, had his own ethical issues, the former president had his own ethical issues related to disclosures. So we're not going to be lectured to by that individual but we're going to be open to legislative solutions if it ensures compliance. Thanks. I have a follow-up on that. Let me just say on that. Some of these people on the other side of the aisle, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Vice Chair, for, for raising this. I mean, they, they consistently, consistently bent the knee and supported the most corrupt president in American history across the board. And I don't want to lecture the Congress about how to proceed when there's a process in place, brilliant members are putting forth different pieces of legislation. Like, we're going to handle this in a thoughtful, evidence-based fashion and come to a conclusion at the end of the day in the manner that the vice chair laid out. But these people lecturing us, I mean, the grifter-in-chief is someone who they supported lock, stock, and barrel, and still do, as loyal members of the cult. Don't build back better. You had mentioned your anticipation is that after the voting rights debate is and the vote is done, that you guys will get something across the finish line. Do you mean to imply that you guys are looking at a smaller, like scaling back the build back better bill? No, no, I mean to imply that I expect conversations will continue, as I believe the administration has indicated, uh, with Senator Manchin and other senators on the other side of the Capitol to try to get important parts of the Build Back Better Act, if not the entire thing, over the finish line. 